yes, 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 yes. It's been so very long. Now I want to stay with you always. And you will, Megan, for as long as I have left in this world, you will be with me. Don't say that. I don't ever want to hear you say that again. No, 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 no. Well, you don't want to hear it because you know it's the truth. Bo loves hope. No, he... And he's loved her for a long time, and he still does. No, he doesn't. And you're not going to have him anyway, even if he doesn't love Hope, but he does. So why don't you just forget it? Never. Bo is going to be mine. He is not something you can own, Megan. Don't you know that by now? Of course I do, but Bo loves Zachary. He wants to be with Zachary. Yes, he loves my little boy. But if you think that's the way you're going to get Bo, well, you can just forget it. Because I'm going to get Zach. Hope is going to get Bo, and you're going to get nothing, Megan. Absolutely nothing. You're wrong. Because the only reason you want Zachary back is so you can have Bo for yourself. Isn't that so? No, you are wrong about that. Bo and I have something that you wouldn't understand. We're friends, Megan. But you don't know what that's like because you don't have any friends. I don't need any friends. Because I have Bo. The Demeras finally have their head of the family again, guys. Yes! The Demeras are back at the helm. Every good soap needs a good leader. But anyways, in this review, guys, we're going to be discussing... The new matriarch that is in town, Megan Hathaway, on this episode of The Soap Sanctuary. Cue it, Joe. Let's go. <laughs> guys, it's DC and welcome to the Soap Sanctuary where all soap lovers are welcome guys. This is my Days of Our Lives review. There's a new matriarch in town. Man, it feels good to be back doing a review guys. It's been a minute. It's been a minute, you know? If you notice, I never let you guys go longer than one month without getting a review from me. I'm trying to be more consistent, but I've had a lot of stuff I've had to prep for grad school and my upcoming graduation from undergrad. So a lot of that stuff has been taking up a lot of my time. And, you know, guys, I'm really grateful. I mean, there's been a lot of change in my life, but I got to admit, I've been the most happiest I've been in a long time, honestly. You know, going to school and just doing something I know I'm going to be passionate about. I mean, my God, like, I've been looking better, feeling better, lost some weight. <laughs> I lost some weight, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get out of this gym and do some things. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, guys, um, so it's it, it's been a blast. I think you guys for being patient with me. Um, you guys know I've been on Box Enterprises channel, Albert, Albert's channel for a while, doing some lives. Uh, hopefully I can do a live today as of this Saturday. If not, then it, you know, it is what it is. I don't know what to say. But uh, I've had my grad school interviews. I've had to be on the lookout for that. So trying to prepare for that and get ready for that and all these tests and stuff I gotta take. And so it's been a lot, guys, but I'm super excited. I'm on my future Dr. Kevin Collins floor here, all right? Trying to go for my master's and my PhD and do my thing, so it's gonna it's gonna acquire some things out of me. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, guys, this is my digital eyes week in review. There's a new matriarch in town, guys. Let me get right into this because I don't like to have these videos on the tangent, but just wanted you guys a quick update, you know, so you guys kind of rock with me a little bit. All right, so the Demeras have a new head. There's a new head of the Demera family, guys. This is the thing: the Demeras lacked for the longest time for me without a patriarch or matriarch, all right? And yeah, we have some of the Demir men that are there, but, but here's my thing, okay? EJ was just not gonna cut it, all right? Uh, Stefan is too new, Johnny is too young, Kristen is too crazy, <laughs> Peter Blake is too absent, <laughs> all right? And then Tony is too soft, so it's like, None of them could really fit that bill or a fill in those shoes like way Stefano did. But Megan coming in, she, low key she's giving Elena a cast sign. She's got that. Megan has got that thing. Like Megan can make it happen. And I knew when I saw her on Beyond Sale, I was like, okay, Megan is gonna make this happen. Like I just know she's gonna make this happen. I was like, yes, Me Me Megan's our girl. Megan's our girl. You know, the thing about it is that we see this happen with 
the quarter mains on General Hospital, right? They have no patriarch or matriarch. They got Mama Q, which is Olivia, um, cause she's obviously now being established as a new quarter main matriarch, um, kind of like a little, like a, kind of reminds me of like Maureen Bauer a little bit, right? Um, but they really, really lack that on days without having that for the Demeros, and they need that. When you have a powerful family like that, you need that. Okay, like so the Cassidines are similar to the Demeros on GH, but to me the Cassidines are kind of like right now the great value version of the Demeros. <laughs> They're like the great value version of the Demeros, cast size of GH. But this is a day's review, right? Um, I want to go into this. The fourth pod, right? So we know we had Kate, Marlena, and Kayla. Um, finally, gave Kayla something to do. Um, I do know that we all know the fourth pod is Bo. We, we knew that from Beyond Salem. So that's not, I don't think that's really a spoiler from anybody here, right? We know that that's Bo. Um, and this is the first time, this actually makes me interested in a Bo and Hope storyline, because we know Hope is going to be coming back as a result of this. Um, because i got to be honest with you, I never really found Bone Hope interesting. I know you guys are telling me about the classic clips and all that stuff, but I, I never really found them interesting. I'm going to be completely honest with you on that one. Um, the Heaven storyline was great, and it was really unique, right? That Which is what we got out of all of this. Um, and as villainous as Nick was, we got to see a vulnerability, and we got to see his point of view of how things happened. Because I totally forgot that Nick had been sexually assaulted, and that's what was, that was that's what fueled his homophobia towards Will and trying to take Ariana from him. I totally forgot that part. Because I was wondering what made him go off the rails. I thought he was just naturally just an a-hole, but that's what kind of made Nick go off, uh, off the rails. So I was glad they kind of reminded of, of, of us of that little tidbit of history. Sorry if I'm talking too fast, guys. I got so much stuff to do today. I'm gonna try to dial it back a little bit, all right? Um, I also wanna say that what I'm noticing on days is that they're putting Demer Enterprises front and center, which is brilliant, right? So Demer Enterprise has been part of the family for the longest time, but we've never seen like a board meeting or anything like that till recently, these past few years, with Lee Shin, the Shins coming on, EJ and Stefan. It's kind of like what Cast Nine Industries on GH would never see it, but it's a nice foundation the writers have laid down the ground in case they want to open that up years down the line, which is what they did with the Demer Enterprises. Um, that's why I was joking about Albert Chan, like, okay, Boston Enterprises, B.E. But really, technically, that reference also comes from a life to live because Buchanan Enterprises was B.E. as well. So Albert knows the joke. He knows it. Um, I want to talk next about uh, Lee Shin. I'm going to get back to uh, Megan in, in just a moment. Well, Lee, Lee is probably one of the best new addition to days, and he's also easy in the eyes, all right? Let's be for real, all right? <laughs> However, this is his thing. His desperation for Gabby is just a little bit sad at this point because Gabby really does not want him anymore at this point. She's done. She's over it. And Lee is trying so desperately to hold on to Gabby any way he can that can get her. And I think he's probably one of the few men in Salem that actually want Gabby. Because no one else is on Gabby's door. And it's not she's not a beautiful woman, but they just know that Gabby is such a callous person. They're probably not going to get much from her. You know what I mean? Um, and Lee, unlike most villains, he's very subtle. Sorry guys, my notes are in front of me that I'm reading. He's very subtle, right? So he's not diabolical. He's a pretty, he's like a calm villain. You know, we don't, we don't get too many of those. He's like a subtle villain. So he could easily go from villain to good guy at any moment. And that's the kind of range the writers have given him the way that they've written for Lee. Um, and the Shin family is a great new addition to Salem because since everybody else is like practically related, you needed a new family to come into dates. We, 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 we kind of we needed that. We, we desperately needed that. And so even bringing in Megan is perfect because this gives Bo and Hope something to do when they come back. And we hopefully get some more flashbacks since y'all been out 499. You know what I'm saying? We saw Nicole last this past week the flashbacks. But not only that, um, it's like the Demers not have the head of the family. And I honestly felt like it could have been Tony, but he's too soft. He Tony can't do the job, guys. He can't. Andre Demer could have, but Andre Demer was too villainous. Like in a, in a sense of that, he would get in his own way. Stefano was a villain, but Stefano knew when to dial it back. That's what makes a good villain, to where you're not so villainous that you gotta get run out of town in the next six months because or else we're gonna get tired of your viewers, AKA, you know, what is it, uh, Cyrus Renault or Peter August, right? Stepano was a good balance, right? He was a good balance to have on the show. All right, so talking about the Shin family though, um, and just having these new families at a time so that we can grow with them, it reminds me now of Gwen's new ownership of The Spectator, which I think is, Perfect, perfect, because 
in this way, Gwen is no longer written anymore as a victim, but as a boss. And so now the writers, we can take her into this next helm. And now Jack and Jennifer are leaving town. And Jack is like, well, at least one of my children is taking over the spectator. <laughs> you know? And to me, I'm really actually rooting for Gwen. Her getting ownership of the spectator was like, reminding me of Victor and Victor Lord. Vic, uh, Vicky and Victor Lord on One Life to Live. Or Isaac and Stephanie on Forever in a Day. Shout out to Candace Mack. And uh, <laughs> the whole crew of Forever in a Day, I love it. I, I'm, I'm listening to season two right now, guys. If you haven't, uh, check that out. Um, it was a, it, to me, this was a good way to develop out her character. Because granted, we all know now that Sarah Horton is pregnant with Xander's baby and she's leaving town. And, but we can still see that Xander in some ways is still pining over Sarah, right? We can still kind of see that a little bit. But in a way, I like that this gives Gwen a deeper purpose beside the man. Because I'm not going to lie to you. I, I know so it's about romance, lonely afternoon, but I'm tired of seeing people pining over relationships. Like there's so much more to life than that. Right? You can have a higher purpose than just that. You, you have to have a higher purpose than just that, which is going to make me get to Maggie Horton in just a moment. Maggie Horton, Kiriakis, excuse me, in just a moment. Um, and the thing is, with this next generation, I believe that Ron will write the storyline well with Gwen. I have, I have faith in him. Unlike they did with the whole Invader with Alexis and Gregory and GH, I don't even know what that is. We're going to get to that in the GH review because I've got a lot to say about that too. Um, but to me, this feels like almost poetic justice across the board because Jack, he really wanted to be there for Gwen. And I feel like Gwen is coming back for everything that's hers. And the self-righteousness and Julie, like, oh, she, how could she do that to Jack and take his company away from him? Jack stole this company, okay, from Leo's mom. So the fact that now Leo's also on board and he's an American spectator, it's like a poetic justice. Diana's son is almost like taking their company back. Because we all know <laughs> Leo is going to be on some shizzle, okay? Some F shizzle, okay, with Gwen. We all know it. We all know it. I wouldn't be surprised if Leo tried to steal steal the uh, the spectator from Gwen. I, I just wouldn't be surprised. Was it the spectator or is it the Vader? Oh, my God. Am I getting the shows confused forever in a day and days? Oh, my God. I think it's the spectator. Okay, yes, yeah, the spectator. For every day, it's called the magnifier. Okay, that's right. I'm getting it right. I'm right. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if Leo tries to steal it away from Gwen. I, I just would not be shocked. Um, and I wouldn't blame him. Technically, in a way, that's like what goes around comes around. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jack stole it from his mother, and now the second generation is stealing it back from his generation. So, you know, Jack is not so innocent of a man, but I think that's why... Jack has such a grace for Gwen. We all know what he did to Kayla. We all know he came to town as this rich guy. I think they were part of a political family, the Devereaux, before you find out he was actually a Johnson. Um, so Jack realizes that his shizzle does stink. And so because of that, there's a grace that he has for Gwen. And I love that though, because Gwen needs that. Even though at times she's pathetic, yes. But the fact that there's a character out there is like, you know what, I don't like what you did. You're not my daughter, but Still kind of here for you a little bit. I was like, I felt that, guys. Right here, I felt that. <laughs> I really did feel that. I really did because, you know, that's the thing about life is that there's some people, even though you know they haven't done you right, or maybe you haven't done them right, right? But there's a grace you have for them or a grace they can have for you. And I know that Jack knows that if he was maybe there to raise Gwen, maybe things would have been different for her. Maybe she would have been a different type of individual. Maybe she wouldn't have felt the need to scheme because that's how she's grown up her whole life. When her mother died, she's always had to like, you know, straggle for things. And so she's still in that survival mode. And as an adult, sometimes when we grow up a certain way, it, it's, it's kind of hard to get out of that at times when you've grown up all your life a certain type of way. So I'm not really that mad at Gwen, to be honest with you guys. I'm not. The only thing is, I just want her to leave Xander alone because Xander will leave her like a hot pocket. Okay, you know what I'm saying? He would definitely just leave her like a hot pocket and go straight to Sarah. And he was about to do that. And Gwen is always the other option, even though I do feel like Gwen is the better fit for him because she accepts Xander as he is. He doesn't have to put on any airs with Gwen. However, I've been kind of like torn on this because maybe Sarah is actually the better woman because she challenges Xander. And in everything in life, you kind of need a challenge. So if you're in a relationship that's not challenging you, like for example, 
you could be with someone and they could say, well, I accept you as you are, which is great, that's lovely. But then what if that, that stops you, hinders you from growing, right? Because this person's like, well, I'll accept you as you are. And what happens is sometimes, as I've seen, is that what can happen is if someone accepts you as you are, which is a good, good thing, you're not growing and they're not growing, right? So they go, well, yeah, you can look how you want to look. You can do how you want to do it because then if you don't have to change, they don't have to change. And of course, it's vice versa, right? And so maybe in a sense, Gwen might not be that right one for him. Damn, guys. Damn. Damn, now I'm, now I'm rethinking about Gwen being the right woman for Xander. I'm rethinking it now. Because Zan, Sarah actually challenges Xander to be a good man. Because Xander's always been a POS. Piece of shizzle. But the thing is, Sarah forces him to grow. He went and he tried to get a real job. But the thing is, too, is that what if Sarah can't really handle a man like him? You know what I mean? And now she's looking, looking to keep her daughter away from Xander. Which we know is going to blow up in her face. But maybe she might be a better man because she challenges him to be better. I think anybody that you're around, your friends, your family, they should inspire you to want to be better, right? And there's nothing wrong with resting in, how do I put this? Resting in who you are, not always having to do and being hustle and bustle. I believe in that too, but I also believe there has to be growth. Sometimes I do feel like you have to make yourself uncomfortable. It is better you do it than life does it, because when life does it, <laughs> it's not going to be fun. <laughs> It's not gonna be fun. So I think that Sarah brings that growth for Xander, but Gwen accepts him as he is. And Xander, in a way, I almost fucking away, Gwen is chasing her father's love, but I'm going way too deep on this. This is so, like this is a therapy session. That's inner Dr. Dr. Kevin Collins coming out of me. But I, I, I do feel like Gwen is chasing that love that she never had. She never really had that true love and she's barely getting that from Jack. She's barely getting that from him. And I don't blame her because honestly, all she just told Jack was that she was just gonna give back with Xander. That's all she said, and he was quick to dis disown her. Would, would he have done that if it was Abigail? Because when he was so opposed to Abigail being with the Demera, Chad Demera, he never really disowned her, right? He was close to it though, I'm not gonna lie, he was kinda close to it though. But he never really disowned her, right? But he was quick to do that with Gwen. But this is something I do notice with fathers. I do feel like, and I, and I watch a lot of like wildlife National Geographic shows too. Fathers, even other species, are always more detached from their children than the mothers are. And I don't know if it's because of the phys physiological connection, obviously. But fathers are always quick to do that. They're, they're quick. They're quick to disown their kid. They're, they're, they're quick to disown you with the quickness. I've never been disowned. Just putting out there's this disclaimer. But I'm just saying, stuff that I've noticed in other, in other people's lives and whatnot. And I feel like, one, if that was Abigail, he wouldn't be as quick to do that. But if Gwen's mom, uh, 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 Tiffany Rischek, was alive, I don't think she would do that. So, right, so even when Chad and, and Jack were beefing over her being with Chad at the time, when, when Abby and, Chad and Jack were beefing over her being with Chad at the time, Jennifer was trying to bring them together, right? Jennifer didn't agree with her being with Chad, but she was able to hold a space for Abigail that, Ch that, that Jack couldn't have for her for whatever reason, right? And for some reason, I know that with the mothers, they're always willing to hold that space for their children. Just like how in General Hospital, Carly's able to hold certain spaces for Michael that Sonny can't. Like that one episode where Sonny said to Michael, yeah, and next time you're gonna, I'm gonna make you beg for it. I was like, oof, 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 oof. But then why not? Why not? Why couldn't Sonny detach himself? Because he's got 16 other kids. It's easy to detach yourself from one kid when you got 16 others. Oh yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? You know what I'm saying? Why not? <laughs> why not? All right, moving on guys. Um, Maggie as the CEO of Titan Industries. I did not see that coming this week. I was like, this is good. This is actually good. Because Maggie, for the longest time, was given Nikki Newman vibes. You know how Nikki is Victor Shad on the YNR, and she really doesn't do much. She's, it's just yes and amen when it comes to Victor, <laughs> when it comes to Nikki, right? YNR on The Young and the Restless. So having Maggie as CEO of Titan, I was like, oh, this is going to be good. And what I could anticipate with this is that, one, it gives Maggie something different to do. Because even when Alex was talking to Maggie, he's like, you know, I just see you baking cookies. I don't really see you doing anything with a business, like a restaurant's not a business. And here's the thing, Alex was saying almost, I think everything that we were all thinking about Maggie, like Maggie? But I think that's also why she's a good candidate because this gives, this, this brings a shock value to the system that we need with Maggie, right? And 
one thing I think could happen is with Megan coming back and hopefully taking over Demare Enterprises, she'll go head to head with Maggie. Because you got Demare Enterprises, Titan Industries, two female CEOs. I know Megan is not the CEO just yet, but I believe she will, she'll have a way to make it happen. She'll, she'll have a way to make it happen. All right? Well, shall, Demare will be female run, right? Gabby, Kristen, and Megan at the helm. Come on now. Come on now. That, that's, that, 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 that's something that we need. Because Kristen can't be that. She, she doesn't have... Kristen is not strong enough. Kristen is too crazy. <laughs> She's too crazy. Just when she gets things together, she messes it up. That's the problem with Kristen. That, that is her biggest problem, right? And now that's what we're seeing now. Uh, Jake being kidnapped by... Brady, I, I didn't really get all why he did that. I don't know if I missed something, but I was like, this, this feels kind of random to me. Felt, felt a little bit random. Felt just a, a tad bit random to me. Um, but I'm happy to see Maggie, Maggie become the CEO, especially that we know that um, John Aniston passed, unfortunately. And, you know, now that he's transitioned, they need a new head of the family for the, 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 the Kyriakuses. And at one point in time, that was Maggie after Alice, uh, Alice died for the Hortons, but now Julie's back in that role, so now that we can have Maggie for the Kyriakuses, and this is good. Every strong soul family needs a head at one stage or another, and I feel like when the family doesn't have that symbolical figure or uh, patriarchal or matriarchal figure, the family kind of, I feel like, slowly starts to lose their identity, right? Or they start to fade off canvas, and so it's smart the writers are doing, because Justin doesn't have that in him. Justin don't, he don't got that in him. He don't got that. We all know Justin's not that guy. He's not that guy. Justin nor Ned on GH is that is that patriarchal figure. It's just it's just not there. It's just not there. I don't I don't I don't I don't, I don't see it. Mm -mm. I don't see it. I don't see it. And lastly, I want to talk about is Jack and Jennifer send off. Let me just say this, guys. I like Melissa Reeves. I really do. And but the thing is, when Katie McLean comes on as Jennifer, like the role just hits differently. It just hits differently when she comes in the role as Jennifer. I've seen Katie McLean as Jennifer, and I'm seeing, I'm sorry, I've seen Melissa Reese as Jennifer, and I've seen Katie McLean as Jennifer. It just hits differently. And I gotta be honest, most roles that Katie McLean has done has hit amazing, especially when she was Dixie on you know, My Children. The only role that Katie McLean did that didn't really hit for me was Rosanna Cabin as Will Stearns. Sorry, guys. That just, that didn't really hit. <laughs> that didn't really hit for me. I don't know why, it didn't hit. But when she was Dixie and All My Children, it hit. And her as Jennifer on, on days, it hit. Two roles that hit significantly, guys. But anyways, guys, that is my Days of Lives review. We have a new matriarch in town. So I asked you guys, what do you guys think about uh, Megan Hathaway's return? What, 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 how do you guys feel about that, actually? I'm excited for it because I feel like, the, like I said, the Demers needed that. EJ is not that guy. Because EJ would have been closest to, but he's not that guy. And Tony is too soft. He is way too soft. This is not the Tony that I knew back in the, well, then again, that Tony I knew was really Andre, so never mind. <laughs> the soft Tony was stuck in an island somewhere, and like I think it was Haiti or something, when they found him in 08. And we got the soft Tony again. We got the soft Tony again, guys. And what do you guys think about uh, Gwen owning the spectator? Um, how do you guys feel about, how, so how do you guys feel about the flashbacks of Eric and Nicole? How do you guys feel about that? Um, which I thought was cool because I think maybe now it's because on Peacock they can be more free with their flashbacks. And I'll say this again as I said in all my reviews. Soaps have decades worth of content. We should be at least getting two or three flashbacks from somebody a month. Like you guys got all this content and you just, you, you leave it there and then use it six, seven, eight months down the line. And then that's it. We don't see it again for another six, seven, eight months. And I don't know if that's not to make the content overused, but we need to see they need to see it, right? Like this, this is only gonna help because if you're trying to bring new viewers in every episode, which I know it's not always possible, but I wanna say three out of the five episodes that are on that week should captivate a new viewer that's coming in. They should captivate a new viewer. And we need flashbacks. We need that soapiness to it. And that's how I feel personally. Cause I get it, you're trying to captivate the viewers that are here, but soaps need new viewers. I'm gonna talk about that more in the GH review because I don't feel like GH is really bringing in new viewers. I don't know. They got the same viewers. So, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's my uh, Days of Our Lives review. I'm really hoping to do a live today. Um, 
I know Albert's going live. I might be going live today at 7 p.m. if this uploads in time on this Saturday. You know how YouTube is, but I feel like because I haven't uploaded in a while, YouTube, YouTube is like gracious enough to let let your downloads go a little quicker when they see you haven't done that in a while. It's when you're consistent. They're like, oh no, we gotta we gotta slow you down. <laughs> They're keeping the man down. The man is trying to keep me down. All right, anyways, guys, that is my Days of Lives Week in Review, and I will see you guys on the next one. I'm out.